This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So guys, this video, I'm coming with uh, something very interesting. Uh, not a topic exactly, but uh, the concept is uh, different Java examples, which is which are being you uh, asked in uh, during interviews and everything. So how to solve these questions? And these questions are very, very simple questions. I so one guy has given me a challenge that okay hey Naveen can you solve all these questions so I have listed out all these questions I don't know from where exactly he got all these questions so then I checked it on internet okay these questions are very popular these uh, one of one to 86 questions are there people are asking uh, you know questions at a time of interview and all but if you see these questions for me like it's very 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 simple but uh, really good for practice point of view if you really want to quickly uh, brush up your java things you can simply solve all these questions one by one so the drill is you have to solve the questions with me okay right now if you're watching this particular video you just open your eclipse pause your pause your video open your eclipse and then solve it together okay and let's see how much time you guys are taking and how much time i'm taking okay likewise so it will be a good practice point of view plus uh, we have to <clears throat> measure that okay how soon you can solve the problem so unless you add two integers like it's simple, like very, very simple basic question. But if you see these questions, the label will be increased. Okay. After every question, the label is getting increased. So you see that, okay, uh, first top 10 questions are very simple. Then multiplication table, then Fibonacci series, then GCD, LCM, then uh, display the character from A to Z using loops, reverse number and all those things. And then, and then it will create one para, uh, uh, parameter and pattern i have never <clears throat> uh, seen okay what will be the answer for that but i'll try so i'm not going to check the answer i'm not going to practice beforehand but i'm going to try okay with you guys and uh, sort map and all those things copy file and then some file directory rename a file and all those things we will be doing that but not in the single video we will be creating multiple videos for that so obviously it's not possible to uh, this uh, to cover all the 86 or whatever number of questions are there but if you see the level will be increased after every question. So let's start with the first question and uh, then we will see how much time we are taking together. And if you don't want to solve it with together, then it will be a good thing for you uh, for brush up Java skills, you know, brush up Java basic knowledge, basic core Java knowledge. And uh, it's not about the object oriented. It's simple, basic programming knowledge in Java, right? Because people are asking about basic question that you should not feel that, okay, uh, uh, and, don't be overconfident with these questions sometimes we see that okay yeah people are overconfident and then we are not able to solve at a time of interview it actually happened with me also a few years back so let's try to solve it okay and it will be really good for uh, developers automation engineers or freshers also it will be really good so let's without wasting our time so let's i've already created a project over here and i'm going to quickly create a and my first name is uh print an integer so it's in the right print integer select the main method click on finish so how you print an integer so the question is print an integer entered by the user okay so we have to use what we have to use a scanner class so i quickly use scanner let's see reader is equal to <coughs> new scanner and then here we have to pass system dot in over here okay and there's a scanner we have to import from java dot java dot util package and then I simply say that, okay, hey, system dot auto print Allen. That I simply say that, uh, what, please enter a number, right? We are asking a number from the user. And then I'm simply saying that, okay, hey, int number is equal to what? What is the reader that you are getting? A dot, uh, method name I forgot, uh, dot next int, yeah, next integer. And then you simply print this particular number on the console. I simple along with the message that you entered this plus some. So let me quickly solve this and let's run it. And it's saying that please enter a number. So let's say I'm writing 10. It's saying you enter 10. Perfect. Right. So let's run it again. This time I'm entering, let's see something minus one. It's saying you entered minus one. So I solved this problem. Done. Okay. So this question is solved. So let me mark with the green color. Second question is that Java program to add two integers. Okay, so for every question, I'm going to create a class so that I, later on I'll be uploading on my blog as well as on my GitHub. So you can check that. Add 
numbers select the main method click on finish so how will we add the two numbers i have two numbers let's see int a is equal to 10 and int b is equal to 20 i want to add these two numbers right so how will you add it simple system dot out print talent with a message with the proper message that okay the sum of a and b is something like this plus what bracket a plus b you have to write okay concatenation along with this a plus b you have to write so sum of a and b is what simple this 30 or you can do something like this that sum is equal to a uh, plus b and uh, a plus b that will be an integer and you directly print sum over here that will also you can do that so this question is also solved sum of a is 30 or you can create a separate function where you're passing two parameters that also you can do that very simple like i don't know why it's very simple then java write a program to multiply two floating point numbers okay two floating point numbers so let's see i'll create a simple class floating multiplication and later okay main method two floating point numbers how will do that so i have to declare two floating numbers float let's see uh, f1 is equal to f l o a t float f1 is equal to let's see uh, 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 2.4 something like this and float f2 remember we have to write f okay as a prefix over here okay f l o a t and float f2 is equal to let's say writing 3.5 f and we just need to do a multiplication so directly write system dot out of print and then the product is is uh, what plus the multiplication of f1 and multiply by f2 so you have to write a star for multiplication and f2 so let's see what we are getting so we are getting this 8.40001 something like this if I'm writing, let's see, 2.02, or 2, because we can declare floating number, we can declare an integer also, 7.0 we are getting. If I'm writing 2.5, multiply by 3.5, so we are getting what, 8.75. So this is also done. So my third question is also done. Next question is that, yes, this is now interesting. Find ASCII value of a character. So how will you find the ASCII value of a character? So let me quickly write a class over here. And I simply write, ASCII character, select the main method, click on finish. Now, some number is there, let's see, sorry, some character is there. Char, uh, C is equal to, let's see, A. Okay, so I know that, okay, small A starts with 97 and capital A start with uh, 65. So, yeah, 97 will start with ASCII value. And then I simply say that uh, I declare one variable over here that uh, int ASCII, whatever, is equal to uh, C, let's see. Whatever the character that you have given, the, you give, give to this particular integer. And then what I'm gonna do, I simply say that, okay, integer that uh, ASCII number is equal to whatever CH that you have taken, you convert that particular CH into integer, okay? Cast into CH whatever ch not ch c in our case we have c over here right c over here then i simply write system dot out of print and then the ascii value of uh, okay i'll simply write this is my ascii directly i'll print it over here and i'll print system dot out of print and then ascii number also i'll print it over here so let's see how exactly it's running in both the cases it's giving you 97 so yeah if you directly print like this you can do that or you can convert c into an integer and store an integer and then print ascii number and ascii so these are the two ways you can simply do that okay so ascii representation of any character now let's see check with check with capital a so the capital a ascii value is uh, 65 perfect what about zero zero will start from uh, 48 to 57 yeah so 0 to 9, 9 means 57. So it should give you 57. Perfect. So let's back to A. You can do that with A also. You cannot write double A because in character double digits are not allowed. So you cannot find out. What about dollars? So for ASCII value of a dollar is 36. Perfect. So this is also fine. Back to A. 
perfect. So my code is absolutely working fine. So these are the two ways you can simply do that. The store your character into integer or convert your character into integer and store inside the integer variable and then print it on the console. That's it. Perfect. Now, uh, next question. So we have solved this particular problem. Next question is our Java program to compute a quotient and reminder. Yeah, this is simple. So I'll create a class quotient and reminder. Select the main method, click on finish. So assume that, okay, I have, um, okay, I have two numbers and let's say this is my dividend. Okay, dividend is equal to, let's see, 30, something like this, and then division is equal to, let's see, 6. So simple, and I have to find out first quotient. So is equal to what? Whatever the dividend that you are using, right, divided by division. And uh, then you will be getting a reminder. So reminder is equal to what? Dividend. You have to use modulus operator by division. So it's simple. So reminder. And then I'll just print it on the console system dot print ln. I simple write. And then system dot our print ln. I simple write reminder. And then let's run it. So you should be able to see that. Yeah, 30 divided by 6, 5. And the division is totally divisible by six, so you will be getting zero over there. Now, if I say that uh, 30 divided by four, so the quotient you will be getting seven, because uh, seven point, okay, something you will be getting, right? So it will ignore the point value, it will just give the seven, and the division is uh, four multiplied by seven, 28, 30 minus 28 is equal to two. So we are getting two over here, simple. So that is also solved. So yeah, it's very simple. Now swap swap two numbers. How will you swap two numbers? For uh, okay, with the help of uh, temporary variables as well as without temporary variables. That both the things we have to show. So let's create a class number swaps. Select the main method. Click on finish. So first we will see. Let's see. I have um, okay. So let's see. I have two numbers. Wow, my first number is integer a is equal to 10 and integer b is equal to 20. These two numbers I have, right? So what I'll do, I simply write system dot out of print and then let's see system dot out of print and then I simply write before swapping. I just want to print a and b system dot out of print and then number a system dot out of print and then b like this, or I simply say that uh, the value of A is equal to plus A, something like this, and the value of B is equal to plus B. So if you simply run it right now, A equal to 10, B equal to 20, we are getting. But what I want output is, output, will, output should be like this, B equal to 10 and A equal to 20. So, and then after swapping, so what you have to do, we have to maintain one temporary variable. So I simply write temp over here. And uh, what exactly I'll be doing, I simply write a is equal to temp, right? And then I'll be writing uh, b is equal to, uh, b is equal to a, okay? No, uh, sorry. Uh, the first is a equal to temporary. Secondary is equal to, or I'll do one thing, I can do something, see, see, this is the confusion, right? Temporary is equal to A first, sorry, yes, that's my mistake. And then you write first variable is equal to the second variable, A equal to B, and then you write uh, the B is equal to the temporary variable, or uh, B is equal to temporary variable, like this. So temporary is equal to A, perfect. Then uh, A equal to B, it means we are giving the value of b to a and then b is equal to temporary okay so now let's uh, run it a and b once again so i'll just write system dot out of print ln a and b so after swapping let's see so we are getting a20 perfect initially a was 10 now a20 and b equal to 20. perfect so before swapping and after swapping with temporary variable with third variable that we are using it 
Now, if you don't want to use the temporary variable, how will you use that? Now, this is uh, without tem temporary variable. How to do that? So, same thing without temporary variable, let's see, I'm simple writing before swapping, we are getting this. And then we will be printing after swapping like this. So, what we have to do? So, first, A. <clears throat> Or uh, let me just comment it out otherwise because we have changed the value, right? So let me comment it out all these ways. So a10 b equal to 20. So okay, see so even I forgot. Okay, yeah. So I'll write a is equal to uh, a minus b, fine. And the second guy is equal to both the things we have to add a equal to a plus b. That will be get the larger number. And then the first guy you will be getting is equal to b minus a. Uh, b minus a. Let me check. A equal to a minus b. So 10 minus 20. This a plus b will be then b equal to this. A equal to b minus a. Okay, let's see. So after swapping, what exactly we are getting? Let's run it again. Uh, yes, right. This is right answer. A equal to 10, b equal to 20. A 10, a 20, and b equal to 10, right? So a equal to a minus b, so it will be like 10 minus 20, so it will become what? It will become minus 10. Then b equal to a plus b. a plus b is what? 10 plus, 10 plus what? 10 plus 20, so it will become 30 now. And then b equal to b minus a, it means 30 minus 10, so it will become 20. So, right, it will become this. So, a equal to 20 we are getting and b equal to a plus b sorry a is minus 10 plus b minus 10 plus b so it will become 10 over here not plus sorry my mistake right guys simple so the output is correct but we have to solve it quickly see i took some extra time because it was totally because we know that it gets very simple but we have to think about the calculation and everything that is a trick over here perfect now the next question is uh, after swapping Check whether a number is even or odd. Okay, uh, that's again a very simple thing. So there are multiple things. Let me create a class. Odd, even. Select the main method. Click on finish. And uh, okay, so let's take. Uh, okay, let's take a scanner class once again, so that we can read the data directly from the console. Reader is equal to what? Uh, new scanner. And then I'll be using system.in. So, a scanner class is used to read the data from at the command line. So, a scanner we have to import. And then what we have to do? Then, simple first, I'll say that, okay, hey, please enter a number. Okay, please enter a number. So, we will enter the number and then we will read that particular number with the help of what? Reader dot uh, method next int method. And then I'll be storing in a particular variable, let's say integer number is equal to this. Now, whatever the number is there, I simply write one if condition that, okay, if your number is totally divisible by two, that is my even number. If it is equal to equal to zero, then that's my even number, right? Then I simply say that, okay, yeah, system dot out of print that in, that's the, uh, whatever the number is there, number plus, is even right else the simple come inside the else part system dot on print ln i simple say that okay number is odd okay simple so let's run it and let's see so i'm passing one even number let's see 10 this 10 is even perfect then i'll run it again now this time i'm passing odd number nine it's saying nine is odd now let's see something else uh what about minus 90 nine minus 90 is even number so it should handle the negative things also what about zero okay so if you pass zero zero is even number so zero can be considered as even number over here okay so simple you can do it like this right so this is also done even and odd you can simply do that now the next is check whether the alphabet is vowel and consonant. Remember first year college calculation. Uh, okay, let me think. How can we solve it? Alphabet is vowel or consonant. Okay, so we have a 
let me write this particular class first of all also in any NT and select the main method and click on finish so okay so we know that okay first of all we have a e i o u right a e i o and u these are the five vowels are available we have to figure out that okay which one is the it's there or not so let's see i'll maintain one character because all these are character so let's see character ch is equal to let's see ch is equal to e e is a vowel right then I'll put a condition over there, okay, hey, multiple uh, if conditions I can write or I can simply write ch is equal to equal to what, a, and then put or condition, either of them, right, if ch is uh, equal to equal to a, if ch is equal to equal to a, e, ch is equal to equal to i, okay, let me just copy this thing. and then o and then u if it is equal to equal to this it means this number is i mean this character whatever the character that we are passing ch plus is a vowel okay else simple programming right is system dot or bend ln and otherwise uh, this is a constant otherwise it's a constant so Okay, let me check ch equal to e, e is condition satisfied over here because we have to write or operator over here. Then only either of them will be passed and then let's run it. Simple, e is over. Perfect. So let me check with other, let's see if we check u. So u is also a rule. Now let me write z. And it's saying z is consonant. Okay, g. g is also consonant. Perfect. If I'm passing d, d is also a consonant. Perfect. So this is simple, you can simply do that. Uh, how can we solve? Yeah, one more thing. We can solve it with the switch case statement. Yeah, I remember that, okay? There are two things you can simply solve it. One is this, another one is you can simply say that, okay? You simply write one switch, okay? Switch over here. And what is the key? The key is CH. The key is CH. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to create multiple cases over here. So this is my first case, A. And I'm not going to break it like this case A, A, E, I, O, U. Five cases A, E, I, O, and U. These are the U, uh, five cases are there. If everything is getting satisfied, I simply say that, okay, whatever the number is, uh, uh, so I same message and we it over here. And then you break it. Otherwise, you come inside a default part and then you simply write this okay so let's see it's working or not so yeah d is consonant perfect so now i'll be passing ch is equal to something which is a so case a is satisfied it will print a is vowel so yeah in both the cases with the help of if else with the help of switch case also working fine let me check quickly with one more case the e i o u u is coming again with the u case and u is vowel. perfect so like this also you can simply solve it okay Perfect. Now the next question, let's see. So we have solved this as well. Program to find the largest among three numbers. Yes, also we can simply do that. This is a very famous interview question, especially with the telephonic round. So the largest among three number, right? The largest among three numbers. Select the main method, click on finish and uh, three numbers are there guys so what i'm going to do that i'll simply write int x is equal to 100 and int y is equal to 200 and int z is equal to 300 these three numbers are there so what is the highest number highest number is 300 so i'll put a condition over here that okay if 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 what if x is greater than y and and x is greater than z it means x is greater than y x is greater than z this means x is the highest number right i'll simply write quick english greatest number then i'll be putting one more if condition over here or i'll be putting one else if over here that uh, if y is greater than z now you must be thinking why i'm not comparing y with x because y and x comparison is already done over here 
then I'm simply saying that, okay, it means Y is the greatest number, else you come inside the else part and then simple solve the problem. Z is the greatest number. In that case, Z is the greatest number. Now let me quickly check. You can, uh, 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 Y greater than greater, right? Sorry, my mistake, Y greater than Z. It means Z is the greatest number. Now let's make Y is the greatest number as 500. Y is the greatest number. Let me make uh, this X is the highest number 600. X is the highest number 600. Now what I'll do, X is greater than, X is greater than Z, but less than Y. So X is greater than Y, no, condition is false, but X is greater than Z, condition is true. But we have written what, AND operator. AND operator means, this is a short circuit operator. It means left hand side and the right hand side. Both the conditions should be satisfied, then only it will come. So it will not come over here because X is not greater than Y. And then it will come over here, Y greater than Z. 700 greater than 300, yes, condition is satisfied. It will print Y is the greatest number. So that is what we are getting, Y is the greatest number. Simple, so we have solved this particular problem like this. Okay, so what else? If you really want to solve, using the nested loop, nested if else condition, that also you can simply do that. So let me try. What I'm gonna do that, uh, I'll put one if condition over here. So this is the first way of doing that. Second way of doing is that what? Uh, if I simply write, if X is greater than or equal to Y, what if both the numbers are equal? That also is possible, right? Then I'll putting one if condition over here that if uh, Y is greater than or equal to Z, it means, it means what? X is greater than Y, Y is greater than Z. It means uh, system dot out of print and then X is the greatest number, okay? And then along with inner if, this particular if, I'll be writing one else over here. Else, what? Um, Z is the greatest number, okay? And then I'll be putting one else for this particular if for else right guys so what i'm doing i'm putting one if condition over here so x and y both are matched and uh, y and z both are matched not y and z we have to write x and z then only x will be the highest number right that's that was about now what i'm gonna do it means now y is greater than equal to z then y is the greatest number. So I'll be saying that y is the greatest number. Okay. And uh, then I'll be putting one else for this guy. This will be a little tricky. And then if it is not, then what? Finally, z is the greatest number. Okay. I don't know it's working or not. Let's see. So, so, so in this case, 700, y is the greatest number. Yes, perfect. In both the cases, we are getting Y is the greatest number. Now let me make this guy as 1000 or yeah, 1000. It means in both the cases, Z is the highest number. Yes, is the greatest number. Now let's make this guy as 1100. So this is X is the greatest number. That is also working fine. Okay, let me try with the, both the numbers. Same, X and Y are same. I don't know, it's probably working fine. Y is the greatest and X is the greatest. Oh, awesome. See, this is better approach actually. Then. Or you can write X greater than equal to Y and greater than equal to Z, then you have to print the same message. But yeah, better we can solve it like this. Because both are the same, same number and both are the greatest number. So both the numbers should be printed like this. Y is the greatest and X is also the greatest. What about this guy also, 1100? Let's see if this logic is correct or not. All the numbers are the same. Z is the greatest and X is the greatest. Here the, the problem. It means there are three common same numbers, but Z and X is showing. Z and X, it's skipping the Y part. So that's that we have to handle it. But let us uh, make it, let's see, 1500 now, once again. Then Y is the greatest. So this logic is working fine. So only that particular condition, guys, you have to add. So that you can do it later. But the question generally people will be asking three different numbers are there. And then you have to find out the highest number. It does not make sense okay, if all the numbers are same. Two numbers are, could be same, but not all three numbers are same. Same thing you can apply for four numbers and five numbers also, you can simply do that. Okay, 
So this is also solved. So find the largest this. Find all roots of quadratic equation. Oops. Okay, that question we will solve it later. Now let's last question we will solve it. Uh, check the leap year. Yeah, that's a very common question. <clears throat> so check the leap year. So how will you solve the leap year question? You must have seen that. Okay, hey, write a program to check the leap year. So we will be writing leap, especially in your college time exams, right? Why, why, and all those things, and <clears throat> computer science laboratory. You must have seen these kind of questions, and you never know. People might ask these questions at a time of interview, also, right? So because people they can they can ask anything, and if you're not giving the answers for these basic questions quickly, and you are taking a lot of time, then that's very embarrassing situation for you, guys, right? Now, what is leap number? So a leap number is uh, exactly divisible by four. First of all, so we have to write that okay. Uh, divisible by a uh, year which is divisible by four okay for all the century years century years means according to the definition of this for all the century years ending with which are ending with what zero zero like 2000 1900 something like this okay then what is century year century year is a leap year only when it is perfectly divisible by 400 that was the condition right the century century year is a leap year it's only when it's perfectly divisible by 400 right so let's see how can we solve the problem so 1900 is not a leap year but uh, because 1900 let's talk about 1900 is not a leap year it's not a leap year why because it is not divisible by 400 okay but what about uh, 2012 First of all, 1900 is not divisible by this, but 2012 is a leap year. Why? Divisible by 4. It is divisible by 4, and it's not a century year. Century year only those years which are ending with double zero. Okay. So let's write this code. It's a little complex. A little complex means we have to maintain all the conditions. So let's try. Let's see if I'm able to solve it or not. So I'll declare one variable int year is equal to, let's take an example, 1900. Okay, then I'll maintain one flag also that true or false flag that uh, this is a leap year or not. So leap is equal to by default false initially. Then I'll be putting one condition over here that if year the first condition is divisible by four percentage uh, percentage four is equal to equal to zero, it means okay this is the first condition and then I'll be checking that if Okay, it's having the last double zero or not. It means how do you check it? It means year percentage <clears throat> modulus 100 equal to equal to zero. Okay, like this. I'm going to check it. Okay, this is a century year or not. Then I'm going to check it. Okay, this century year is the leap year or not. So how will you check? I simply write one more if condition over here that if year modulus 400 is equal to equal to zero. Right, let's equal to equal to zero. It means make this leap year, leap uh, the, uh, flag is equal to true. Okay, leap flag is equal to true. Else, you come inside the else part, it is not a leap year, so make it false. Like this. Okay. If year percentage is not equal to equal to zero, it means you go to this particular if and you write one more else over here it means that also leap is equal to what if it is not 100 then it means it's not a century year if it is not a century year, it is already divisible by four it means leap equal to true this is a leap year right guys and if the first condition if your year is not even divisible by four that is the first primary condition it's not even divisible by four it means you write one else over here 
and inside this whatever else i'll be writing <coughs> uh, what leap is equal to false leap equal to false so let me quickly check it again uh, four then hundred then hundred and 400 if it has gone through with all the things then it's a per perfect leap year <clears throat> right it's a century year as well as century year means ending with double zero like 19 uh 1900 2000 1800 these are the century years but we have to check those century years are are what those century years are the leap year or not it should be divisible by four so first checking with the four then this then coming over here <clears throat> then it's perfect true it has gone through with all the three conditions else false else if it is not a century year then it's already divisible by four then it will be what uh leap equal to true it's a leap year and then finally if it is not divisible by four leap equal to false once again right so what i'm going to do that uh, i'll come out of this particular if else condition i'll put one condition that if you have found leap year then what system dot our print then whatever the year that you're passing plus is a leap year else system dot our print are in not a leap year okay so 1900 is not a leap year so it should come inside the not a leap year actually this logic is fine or not 1900 is not a leap year perfect it's fine but uh, 2012 was a leap year so let me just change the variable to 2012 was a leap year yes what about 2016 in every uh, four years we have leap year then what about 2020 so this logic is working fine so 2020 is a leap year or not 2020 is a leap year yes perfect okay 2020 is corona affected leap year right so perfect this is also perfectly working fine like that okay so make sure that okay right remember this logic right? it looks very easy we know that okay leap year is a number is a year which is divisible by four but there is a condition also with respect to century year and you have to write a logic with all the conditions properly like that okay so this question is also solved now later on we will see that again okay, number is positive negative and all those things later on guys not now i think that is enough for this particular video guys so now the first video this is only first video questions are very very simple very straightforward no uh rocket science but later on <clears throat> the level will be increased but all these questions if you see these are very basic questions very straightforward questions yes recursions and reverse a sentence calculate average using arrays find the largest element of an array calculate a standard deviation oh this i need to check add two matrices yeah that also we will see okay using multi-dimension arrays and all those things transport of a, mat a matrix so these are the four matrix questions are there we will be solving it okay but later on and later on it will be more interesting things add two dates join two list how we do that <clears throat> so i think we will enjoy this particular series so you also solve all these questions okay top 10 or top 11 questions we please try to solve by your own along with this video so first you read the question pause the video and then solve it and let's see if you are able to solve it that's good if you're not able to solve it see the solution over here okay I'll be sharing all these things on my uh, blog as well as on my Git repository also. You can find this entire code over there as well. So thank you so much, guys. Thanks for watching this video. And I hope you guys are enjoying. You will be enjoying this particular Java question series. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching this.